Is lay the draw and backing 1-1 a good insurance strategy to trade football with on Betfair? In this video, we're going to be asking that question and then answering it in full. So coming up, I do have a step-by-step -step strategy overview to show you how you would use lay the draw plus back 1-1. One, one. I've got a live demonstration of the traditional approach, the traditional way of doing this. And then of course, I am gonna show you what I feel is actually the best way of using lay the draw and backing 1-1 one, one at the same time. And there are some live trading demonstrations of this recorded on the Betfair interface. So you can see it all for yourself. And then I'm not gonna leave you in the lurch either. Before we finish this video, we're gonna be asking that question, is there an edge? It's a question I'm gonna be answering fully before we leave, and so this is gonna be a good one. Let's get into it. And so before we get started, I do just wanna say that for those who do stay and stick around to the end, I do have some freebies attached to this video. So I'm gonna give you a link to an online calculator that is gonna allow you to instantly see just what edge the strategy is actually giving you. And then also a PDF cheat sheet download. You can download that for free and that is also gonna be a big help too. So right now, it's not gonna make much sense to you, so do not skip ahead and download these and then wonder what on earth is going on. If you wait till the end of the video, then you can download them and then you'll know exactly what to do. So I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this video, the chances are very good that you have a very good understanding already of the later draw strategy and how it works. And now you just wanna explore some of the insurance methods to try and extract more value out of the market. But if you are totally new, here is a quick, quick demo of later draw. You can see here, this is Valencia against Barcelona. We laid the draw here at 4.5 with 100 pounds. And then later on in the match, Barcelona scored. So that made the price on the draw rise to 6.2. And then we would we cashed out for a profit. We cashed out for a twenty-seven pound profit there, uh, due to the price difference. It rose from four point five up to six point two. That is the essence of lay the draw. And if you're still new to lay the draw, then there are plenty more videos on this very channel for you to check out regarding that. But of course, a lot of people, once they get involved with lay the draw, they want to look at ways that they can extract further value out of the market. You can see here that is a twenty-seven pound profit, but is there a way to make even more money out of this, out of a later draw trade? So a lot of people do look at how to use insurance uh, to guard against some of the worst case scenarios when you're using later draw. And we do a, vid a video on that as well. We do have a, a video showing how to take nil-nil insurance when you're using a later draw uh, trade. Do check that one out. But what is interesting is that the most frequent draw score line is actually 1-1 rather than nil nil. So keep in mind, nil nil occurs 8% of the time, but one one occurs 11% of the time. So, I mean, some would argue it's worth taking insurance by covering the one one. It's worth much, much more worth taking insurance on the one one than it is on the nil nil, which is why I, do, I have had a lot of people asking me about the possibilities of laying the draw and then taking insurance by covering the one one. And this is what we're gonna get into right here. So if you do want to do lay the draw and then backing 1-1 one, one as some sort of insurance strategy, then the most common approach is to lay the draw at kickoff and then back 1-1 one, one in the correct score market with enough money to cover the risk that is on the match odds market. Video demonstration is coming up to make it even more simple, don't worry. But... Um, and just just to, just to make this clear, we're not we wouldn't be backing one one after the first goal is scored because then you're just going to get a pretty similar price to what you would get if you were just backing the draw, or you would get a similar price to what you would get backing one one at the start of the match. So the most common approach is to lay the draw at kickoff and then backing one one in the correct score market to to cover the risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to going to talk anymore. I'm actually just going to jump into a live demonstration to show you exactly how we do it. Let's get into it. So this is Blackburn Rovers against Newcastle United. It's an FA Cup match and we're gonna go in, uh, lay the draw on this one. Uh, we're gonna lay this at 3.45. As you can see, this is quite an even, even fixture. Uh, Blackburn and Newcastle quite close in the odds there. So Blackburn are the favorites in this one, but they're not the uh, outstanding. Uh, overwhelming favorites that you might usually want uh, when you're doing uh, any sort of later draw but 
as you know, we're doing later draw, and we're also going to cover the one-one score line. So this is all a, a demonstration <laughs> to give you an idea of what to expect if you're going to take this approach. So. As you can see, we've got 245 pounds of risk on the draw there. So if we head over to the correct score market, we obviously need to put on enough to, uh, to cover the 245 pounds of risk. And I, I mean, as you can see, I've almost got to put on, I think, what is it, 40? And bear in mind, I'm not gonna take any sort of commission into account on this one. We're just gonna try and keep this demonstration as simple as possible. So I got a back one one, at 7.2 with 40 pounds. So I'm gonna back that there, and then that's pretty much covered it. So it's 248 on the one one, and then um, 245 on the draw. We're not taking commission into account for this demonstration. So that's covered there, but obviously you can see, I mean, the, my profit potential is 60 pounds. It's gonna be 40 pounds minus from 100. So the most I could win uh, out of this is the 60 pounds. And obviously it's later draw, it's trading. So ideally we do wanna be uh, trading out um, and locking in that profit uh, as early as we can. But anyway, this match is about to kick off. So once it kicks off and, and the goals start going in, then, um, then I'll give you an update. So this match has literally just kicked off and we had a goal pretty much in the first minute. So if you remember, we laid the draw at 3.45, the goal's gone in and the price on the draw has risen to 4.2. It's not really a big, big uh, price rise. Now we could uh, just lock in a profit of 15 pounds 83 there. But of course, remember we have a, uh, well, we, we, got, we got some money involved in the correct score market and we do have the 1-1 one, one score line covered. Uh, at the moment so at the moment we've laid the draw back in 1-1 you don't do anything because we're, we're we're in a pretty good situation if it goes to 2-0 uh, then the price on the draw is going to rise even higher if it goes to 1-1 one, one, then um, obviously we've got that covered and if it stays 0-1 then it's not a draw and we're going to win on the Newcastle uh, Newcastle winning the match so uh, this is the ideal start if you are going to do later draw plus uh, backing 1-1 one, one. obviously your worst one of your worst case scenarios anyway is pretty much the nil nil draw so once you avoid the nil nil and you get a goal uh, you're in a good position with this so we're in a good position as it stands we'll see how this one develops 22 minutes on the clock it has just gone 2-0 to Newcastle so if you were doing a regular later draw trade uh, then remember we laid the draw 3.45 the draw price has gone up to 9.8 uh, as I speak. And that means we could just lock in a profit now, 63 pounds uh, across all the outcomes, 64 pounds uh, as you can see there. Now, um, obviously, the problem is we've also backed 1-1. One, one. So if we have a look at the correct score, just to remind ourselves, and just to illustrate that the 1-1 one, one score line can now no longer happen, that is impossible. So the 40 pounds that is in this market, that is lost. That is now completely gone. So whatever profit we do make, on a match odds market, we need to minus uh, or subtract 40 pounds from it. So really the profit that we're, that we're looking at at the moment is actually 24 pounds 76 that we can lock in. And when you consider the big, uh, the big, the big risk of, of, of what we're doing here, it's probably not a profit <laughs> worth locking in. So really what we need to do is to try and let this match play out and try and extract the full 100 pounds profit at, in the very least from this. And then even then it will still bring us up to a 60 pound net profit uh, on, this, on this trade. But um, I'm sure you're probably looking at this and you're realizing, well, hold on, there is a, a bit of a problem which could develop if this score line then goes to one, two. If Blackburn pull a goal back now, um, then we're in, we're in a world of bother because we remember we've lost the money on the correct score market. We've lost that insurance. The £40 has gone. I mean, do we start to cover the 2-2? Two, two? Do we cover the 3-3 three, three as well? I mean, we're, we're going to start to eat further in to our profit margin. So that is something to consider as well. So um, when this scenario happens, the best thing to do is to just pretty much pray that there's either no more goals or any more goals come, they come to Newcastle. Because if it does go to 2-1, we're probably going to have to exit the market uh, just, to, just to be on the safe side. Because the worst case scenario from here is that a match goes to 2-2. So a lot of food for thought. And as you can see, uh, one of the big problems with laying the draw plus backing 1-1 is that 
the one one is going to eat in to uh into the profit margin and you're going to end up in situations like this so um as it stands if we just carry on and let this play let this play out and it finishes two nil or newcastle score more goals then we'll be making 60 pounds but um hopefully blackburn won't get on the score sheet but you can see the flaws there right before your very eyes well speak of the devil and the devil will turn up <laughs> so just as i was talking about that scenario of blackburn pulling a goal back and it putting us in a world of in a world of danger in a world of bother um, blackburn actually did go pull a goal back so this is actually turning out to be a very great demonstration for you guys to kind of show the big problems that you can have when you do lay the draw and then back one one because look at the cash out amount now is but that back down to 13 12 pounds profit um, just about and remember we're dead on the correct score market we're already minus 40 pounds on there so if this goes if, if black were to equalize right now that we're going to be in in a lot of trouble so the best thing and especially because i think they just got a corner so let's just get out of this <laughs> let's get out of this so the best thing to do honestly when it goes to a 2-1 when it goes to the one goal gap we've got to get out now you're going to see that we have so, so we've got 15 pounds on the match odds market. We've lost 40 pounds on the correct score market. So we're actually down. So we've actually lost 25 pounds uh, with this later draw trade by covering the 1-1 one, one score line. Despite one of the most ideal scenarios in later draw happening, the two goal lead for Newcastle. So, I mean, there you have it. You've got a, an example of quite a few of the problems that you're gonna have if you do lay the draw uh, plus one one straight from kickoff we it was going well for us the two goal lead but the, the profit wasn't really worth all the risk and then blackburn pulled the goal back and now we're actually going to lose money <laughs> we're actually going to lose money on this trade so blackburn one newcastle two and i think we're done with a demonstration for a lay the draw plus one one from the kickoff and just to illustrate this further, this match actually did go to 2-2 <laughs> by halftime as well. So, um, I mean, quite a rare scenario to see a team go two goals up and then lose the two-goal lead in the same half. But it kind of illustrates some of the problems that you can have if you are covering the 1-1 scoreline. Because, as you saw, the amount of money that we could have locked in, uh, even when there was the two-goal lead, I mean, was it really worth all that risk? And you have to ask yourself, is covering the 1-1 one, one scoreline over complicating things? So anyway, there is a good example just to kind of demonstrate that it's, it's not as simple as it sounds to just lay the draw and then cover 1-1. One, one. And in the next part of the video, we're going to start to take a look at where you should or could consider using lay the draw plus 1-1. One, one. And I did think that this was a really, really good example to really highlight some of the problems that you are going to encounter if you did want to use laying a draw and then covering 1-1 one, one from kickoff. As you saw in that match, it was a huge liability for a low return. And then also you have to consider that it was always going to take 90 minutes of work. You're getting in at kickoff and then if the scoreline is nil one or nil two in the late, late stages, you really have to hang around till the final whistle, till you can secure that profit. And one of the great things about lay the draw trading is usually the simplicity of it. I mean, usually once there is a goal, that is it. You cash out, you, you lock in your profit, and you don't have to do anything more if you don't want to. But with this approach, you're, you're giving yourself pretty much 90 minutes of work that you're going to have to definitely hang around from kickoff till the final whistle in that one. Um, and also low flexibility. You did see in that example, we, we didn't have much flexibility. When Newcastle went two goals up, a more experienced football trader could have said, hey, I'm going to take that profit, but now I'm going to oppose Newcastle because there's lots of time for Blackburn to get in the match or, or, or vice versa. I mean, there's lots of things that can come up during a football match. But with that strategy there, we didn't really have any flexibility. We couldn't have, have done much. We had to just kind of hope for the best. So, um, yeah, I mean, th there are lots of problems. And one of the biggest problems is that it's, it's pretty complicated, right? It's a pretty overcomplicated way of laying a draw if you're entering from kickoff. So, as mentioned, I'm going to show you what is probably the best way uh, to lay the draw and then back 1-1 one, one, because it's, there, there is still hope for this approach. There is still hope. You don't have to uh, <laughs> close the video off just yet. Now, the best time to use this... and. As, you've, as you might have seen in some of my other videos, the best time to lay the draw in general it is in the second half, as I'm pretty sure a lot of you did guess. 
Now, big reason for this is that in the second half, if you're getting involved late in the draw, you've got a lower draw price. But also at the same time, if you go over, go over to the correct score market, you've also got a higher 1-1 price than you would have had right at the start of the match. So it's going to make a bigger profit margin. You saw the profit margin that was available, the potential maximum profit we could have made in that Newcastle Blackburn match if it all went to plan. And it wasn't great. It wasn't great. But there's a much bigger profit margin available if you do get involved at halftime or it's just sometime in the second half. And then the fact that we're getting involved in the second half just means there is less time in the match for complicated scenarios. As touched upon in the previous slides, uh, getting involved from kickoff, we could be there from minute zero to night for the 90th minute. But um, getting involved just in the second half with laid a draw and covering 1-1, pretty much you're only involved for that half so it cuts the workload the workload time down in half um, so that is one thing to keep in mind as well so basically if you're going to get involved in the second half the strategy is pretty much the same you're just heading over to match odds you're going to lay the draw when it is a nil nil at half time i mean obviously you could use this approach if it was one one and then you're, you're covering the two two and all that sort of thing but let's just keep it simple for now so match odds, lay the draw when it's nil-nil at half time, and then head over to the correct score market and then back the 1-1 one, one score line in order to cover your liability on the draw outcome. Very, very simple. But from here, you would just let the match play out and you would only take action in one scenario, and that would be if a 2-1 or 1-2 score line appears. And technically, if you're disciplined and you only take the action to trade out the match odds market, uh, when it's 2-1 or 1-2, that technically you should only ever make a loss if the match actually finishes nil-nil. And, I mean, let's face it, if it does finish nil-nil, you are going to lose no matter which way you played the nil, which way, no matter which way you played the later draw strategy in, in that case. So you've got to keep that in mind. So that is it. That you're getting involved in the market and you're only ever going to trade out if it hits a 2-1 or a 1-2. So... That is to keep in mind. I mean, obviously, it could hit a 3-2 or a 4-3. You're just going to get out when there is a one-goal gap. But more than likely, if it hits the 3-2 or a 4-3, it's probably going to have gone 2-1 at some point. But anyway, that is it. I think we should now check out some live demonstrations of, of this so you can see it for yourself on the Betfair interface. So this is a match from the Spanish League. This is Celta Vigo against Leganes. Celta Vigo... Uh, against Leganes is nil nil at half time and uh, the first half wasn't really uh, that that exciting um, there wasn't many goal attempts or or, or or much to report but that is actually what can make it more ideal for this actual particular method now if you had any sort of reason to believe that there is going to be at least one goal in this in this match in the second half then you've got a, a good a good opportunity to be doing the later draw plus one one now Main reason is because look at the price on the draw. It's 2.52 to lay. Now, we're going to get in and we're going to lay the draw and we're going to go in with £100. And you can see the risk there is going to be £152. Now, because the first half was uh, so boring, you could say, um, the price on the 1-1 one, one is actually a bit higher than you would normally expect. It's actually 8.8 .8 to back. I could probably get in there matched at 9 if I wanted. But for us to cover that stake, I'm just going to put in £21. I'm going to match that uh, hopefully at 8.8. .8. I'm sure I could get matched at 9, but for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to keep this simple. So now you can see we've got £163.80 sitting on the draw. So once we take away the commission, that is going to cover our risk uh, on, on the draw here. So sorry, on, on the correct score, is covering the 1-1. One, one. Just, just, to, just to make that totally clear. So £163 is on the 1-1 scoreline, and we have £152 of risk on the draw. So once we get the goal, we're going to be in a pretty good position uh, with this particular match. But, of course, we need that goal. A nil-nil is going to kill us <laughs> with this trading strategy. But anyway, um, 45 minutes on the clock. I'm going to keep you posted as this second half develops. So we're at the last play of the game in this one and the ball's been cleared and as you can see this one has just finished nil nil so there is the worst case scenario 
that you could expect uh, with this strategy. And that's what you're trying to avoid. You're just trying to avoid the nil-nil. So in this case, you can see we took the loss on the draw. That means we take a loss on the match odds market, and we also take a loss on the correct score market. So in the end, we lost £173. And um, if we consider £21 as our risk on the correct score, that means that um, the biggest potential profit we were going to make was the £79. So um, based on that, it would mean that we would probably need two winning trades in the row to uh, get back get back even. So that's all the stuff you have to keep in mind if you're going to use a strategy like this. It does mean that if you do take a loss, you're going to need probably two, maybe even three wins to get back uh, to get back that loss. So obviously, look, you you need to decide whether um, whether it's worth the patience, whether it's worth the risk. But uh, yeah, there is a losing example uh, with uh, with the trade. I did watch the match in the second half, and I actually thought it was a pretty um, I thought it was a pretty good go from Celta and Leganes were trying to get them on the break as well. But anyway, uh, there's an example of a losing trade with this strategy. And as you know, if it's nil nil, then you're going to lose. That is what you're trying to avoid when you're using this method. So this is West Ham against Brighton, nil nil at half time. The draw price is 2.60 to lay. So uh, pretty low for a draw price uh, to lay. So we, we should be able to get involved in this one. We're going to lay the draw here. £100. It's going to give us £160 worth of risk. Now, um, did that bet actually get taken? I'm not sure what happened. Okay, yeah. Well, that's bet fair for you. I'm not sure what happened there. But yeah, it did get taken. Always double check your bets. Definitely. Always double check your bets. You have no idea... Uh, what, what goes on with Betfair sometimes. But anyway, we need to cover £160 and we've got odds of 7.8 on the 1-1. One, one. So £20 are not going to do it. Let's try 22.50. Okay, that's not quite 22.50. <laughs> Let's try 22.50 there. Uh, still going to need a bit more, right? 23. So that's like 24. It's just about, about going to get there for us. So... Um, yeah, it's going to be £24 of risk on the 1-1 one, one to cover the 1-1 one, one if it ever goes back to 1-1. One, one. And obviously, we've got £160 worth of risk in the market. So, I mean, the £100 minus the 24 in the correct score market does give us £76 profit potential to play with on this one. So, we are going to uh, let this match play out. And obviously, with this, we need a goal. We do need a goal. Uh, to do anything. So uh, West Ham nil, Brighton nil, second half just about to kick off and we need a goal. So here we are, 58 minutes on the clock. Now, <laughs> I was just about to press record. Brighton just took the lead. As I was getting the video ready, they've just doubled the lead. It's just gone 2-0 to Brighton. So for this strategy, that's exactly what we want. We want it to, to go to 2-0 to Brighton and we just don't want a 2-1 scoreline. Obviously, a 1-1 scoreline means we break even but if this goes to 2-1 it means we're gonna to have to exit out on the match odds market now if you look at the moment we can lock in a profit on the match odds market of 72 pounds right now if we head over to the correct score if we do that we're gonna to have to take away 24 pounds that we've already lost now on the match odds market so Obviously, as, as touched upon, our best thing to do at this moment is to let this run and let, try and let this run to the final whistle. I mean, if this stays 2-0, we don't have to take any action. 3-0, 4-0, anything like that. As long as there's a two-goal gap, then we don't have to take any action. But we're going to keep an eye on this because if this does go to 2-1 at any point, then we're going to have to get out of the market and take what we can at that particular point. So there you have it. As it stands... Lay the draw, plus 1-1. One, one. We're on for a win. £100 minus the £24 on the correct score market. But um, we need to be wary that this doesn't go to a 2-1 scoreline or a one-goal gap now uh, at this point, from this point on. And with 30 minutes left to play, <laughs> there's still likely to be a bit more action in this one. But anyway, that is the latest on this. West Ham nil, Brighton 2. I'll give you an update as anything, if anything else develops. So 65 minutes on the clock and the scenario that we didn't want was West Ham putting a goal back, bringing it back to a one goal gap because that means that we're now going to have to close this. So we're not going to make that full profit uh, that was potentially there for us. But let me just close this because obviously we want to eliminate uh, all the risk from the trade there. 
Um, that was crazy. I had like a one second of delay on that trade. I'm sure I wasn't meant to get that. But um, West Ham won Brighton too. So you can see now we've locked in, uh, let's just call it £33 uh, on, the, on, on the match odds market. Now, if we head over to the correct score market, you can see that we're in that situation where we've lost £24. So th you can see this is the big flaw or sticking point with laying a draw and backing 1-1 one, one because... Obviously, we cannot leave that exposed. We couldn't leave it uh, with a chance of going to 2-2 because if, if that was the case, we're going to lose on the draw on match odds and the correct score, and it's going to be a pretty big loss. But um, as it stands, I mean, we, we're going to make a small profit on this one of uh, however much, what, six, seven pounds, however much. But um, you have to accept that if it does ever go to a 2-1 scoreline, you're probably going to be breaking even or taking a small profit. So... That is, is one of the big flaws, and it, it kind of shows you again, I mean, the, the big dilemma that uh, you can have with, with this method as well for a lot of people. And, well, as I speak, it's just gone 2-2. <laughs> just gone 2-2 as well, which shows you why you have to get out in this situation. But there's going to be a lot of people who are going to have the dilemma. When, the, when you get the two-goal uh, gap like Brighton had, do you just lock in the profit that's there and take a potentially small profit because you're worried that it might get back to a 2-1 or a 2-2? Uh, you know, there's, <laughs> that, that's, that's why we love football trading because there is no straight, direct answer for anything. But, um, hey, you've seen a pretty good, a good example there. Uh, we saw Brighton go two up. You saw what happens when it was the 2-0 and you saw us get out in time when it went to 2-1 because if I hung on for just two minutes, then... Um, yeah, we would be in a world of bother right now. And it's just a really bizarre match. Brighton scored 56 minutes, doubled the lead on 58 minutes. West Ham scored 66 minutes and an equalised on 68 minutes. Really crazy match. Wish I was trading this properly, but um, there you have it. Uh, there's, there's a good demonstration of later draw plus 1-1, one, one, and you've kind of seen the big flaws of the strategy in, in this demonstration here. So this is Wolves against Crystal Palace, and it's half time in this one. And you can see that the draw price is 2.3 to lay. Very, very low for a draw price at half time. So if we lay this, we're going to lay this with 100, uh, 100 pounds there, and it's going to give us 130 pounds worth of risk in the market. Now we're going to head over to the correct score market, and obviously we have, remember we had a really low draw price, but that means we're going to have a really high high-ish price <laughs> on the 1-1 so uh, we want to try and cover 130 pounds so I'm just going to mess around using a what if we could probably um, okay 18 pounds should cover it obviously we, we, we kind of have to factor in the commission I don't want to totally do that on this video I don't want to confuse things but 18 pounds is enough just to cover the 1-1 so that'll leave us with 140 pounds on the 1-1 score line uh, so whatever profit we do make, we've got a minus 18 pounds from the correct score market. And if we look at the match odds market, we've got a hundred pound potential green, uh, minus the 18 pounds. So that means we've got 82 pounds profit potential, uh, to play with on this one. So obviously, uh, as, as, as mentioned, we do need a goal. That is the most crucial part of this. So once we get the goal, then we're in business with this and it's just about to kick off in the second half. 82 minutes on the clock in this one 83 actually it's just gone one nil to uh crystal palace so uh th this this is this is exactly what we want we want a goal and we, we like the goal to be late as well so um if you have a look at this situation remember once it goes to one nil we don't actually take any action when it's later draw plus one one because we have the one one score line covered so remember we've got um 140 pounds sitting on the one one score line so from here it goes to one one then we're covered. The 1-1 the one, one scoreline is covered. So there's no action to take. And if this scoreline stays the same, we're going to make the £100 profit that is sitting on Crystal Palace and obviously minus the £18 um, that is on the correct score market. So it should be a profit of £82. So we don't do anything. Now, right now, if we were to just lock in the profit, it would be a profit of uh, £64. So we, if it remains like this, or Crystal Palace go two goals up, three goals up, or however much, then we're going to be making £82, which is a better profit than just locking it in, as you can see. And especially with later draw plus 1-1, one, one, if we just locked it in, that's £64 minus the 1-1. One, one. So we're obviously not going to do that. That doesn't make sense at all. Now, what we could do is we could exit this for a 93 pence loss um, and then 
And then if we lock in the profit on the matchos market, £66. That would put us £65 up altogether. Uh, and then that guarantees us a profit no matter what happens for the rest of the match. But we could just stick with it. We could just leave the £100 sitting on Crystal Palace knowing that if it goes to a draw, we're going to break even. We're not going to lose anything. We're not going to make anything. Um, but if we hang on, we're going to make £82, which is a much bigger profit than what, what is achieved by just locking in the profit. So that is one of the big advantages right there in front of your eyes of doing the lay the draw plus the 1-1. One, one. As with regular lay the draw, you still need a goal. You're going to need a goal <laughs> no matter what. So um, there you have it. I mean, it is 84 minutes on the clock. If Crystal Palace can hold on, we're going to walk away with a profit on this one. But um, I'll give you an update uh, as, as, as anything happens on this one. So a deep, deep into injury time with this one. Crystal Palace are hanging on to their one goal lead. And uh, I just wanted to point out another little option you do have at this moment when it does get into injury time, when you're doing later draw plus 1-1, one, one, is that right now I could just exit now on the match odds market and take the 80, 89 pounds that is on offer. Um, if I really feel that Wolves might get an equaliser, I could cash in here, cash out on, on the match odds market, uh, knowing that... I've got a, a, a potential to win twice. I've got the £140 sitting on the 1-1 one, one scoreline if Wolves can bring it back to 1-1. One, one. So if I really thought there was a lot of pressure, especially heading into injury time at this point, then that is one of your options there. Um, you, could, you could take that money and then see if there's an equaliser and then potentially win twice. Worst case scenario is that you're going to make, what was it, the £90 minus the £18. You haven't quite... Uh, held on for the maximum profit like we suggest um, as I speak it looks like Crystal Palace are going to double the lead um, well my stream is well behind I think it's a penalty yeah penalty to Crystal Palace so uh, yeah if, if they if they double the lead in this one then we're pretty much done uh, I don't think it's going to be time for Wolves to come back um, from here but of course when you're using a strategy like this always always make sure that you're ready to cash out if it ever gets to a 2-1 scoreline so um, I'll give you an update once the penalty is uh, is is taken. And that is it. The penalty was scored. That was the last action of the game. And it was a 2-0 win for Palace. Um, profits disappeared off the screen. Uh, Betfair shut in the market, so I can't even really review. But you know that we did make the £100 profit on Crystal Palace, minus the commission, of course. And we did lose £18 on the match odds market. Um, so that would be a, a clear profit of 82 pounds on that one so they have a very good example of the later draw plus the one one method so i hope you enjoyed checking out those videos demonstrations and now you should have a very basic idea of the best way to approach later draw and back one one you've seen your losing examples you've seen the scenario where you have to trade out the only scenario where you have to trade out is when the one goal gap happens, the 2-1 uh, scenario. And so you saw what, what, what can still be salvaged when that scenario happens. And of course, you saw the winning example of Wolves Palace when it actually goes to plan. And just some of the ideas that you could do in the final stages, as I did highlight there, where you do have a bit of flexibility, if you do wish to maybe, maybe win twice in, in certain occasions. Didn't happen there, but it might happen in other matches. It's just some of the many options that you do have. But, um, I mean, if you're watching this video, there is a question that we should all be asking, and I hope it is a question that you are asking right now and wondering. And that question is, I mean, is there really an edge? Is there really actually an edge to laying a draw and then covering 1-1? One, one? Because when you look closely and when you think about it, by laying a draw and covering 1-1, one, one, we're effectively just backing over 0.5 goals at half time. So, I mean, are we really getting value out of the market? Wouldn't it be better to just back over 0.5 goals would we end up with the same result this is a question which i hope you're asking because <laughs> it is very very important are we just going round in circles to end up with the same result so to try and answer this question what i did was i took a screenshot to show you the price if we were to back over 0.5 goals at half time in the same wolves palace match OK, now, as you can see, you could have backed over 0.5 goals, uh, 1.44. And in that scenario, all you need is one goal and then you've won. OK, so obviously a 1-1 one, one scoreline and a 2-1 scenario doesn't really matter if you're backing over 0.5 goals because you're just going to win no matter what. But of course, later draw plus 1-1 one, one is a whole different way of doing things. So let's compare the, the two scenarios. So 
remember in our later draw plus one one trade on the crystal palace match we risked 148 pounds and we made 82 pounds remember if that match stayed nil nil we probably would have lost 148 pounds but it went the way we wanted it to go and we actually made 82 pounds of profit now if we had backed over 0.5 goals at 1.44 with that same amount that same 148 pounds how much would we have made here's the answer we would have made 65 pounds so the profit was bigger uh doing later draw plus one one but how much bigger how much bigger it was a 26 percent profit increase doing it later draw plus one one versus just backing over 0.5 goals and i mean a 26 percent profit increase is not to be sniffed at a lot of people work very hard just to try and get some sort of five percent <laughs> profit increase or some sort of five percent increase in the value so Something like 26% is definitely uh, not to be sniffed at. But, of course, I mean, it's not totally perfect. You still have to consider that if that match went to 1-1, one, one, we would have made zero. If it went to 2-1, we would have made maybe around £10, depend, depending on the time of the match. So that's something you do have to keep in mind as well. And there is a lot to weigh up if you're going to decide whether you want to use this, if you just want to back over 0.5 or if you just want to go over a whole different strategy entirely. But either way, as promised at the start of this video, I do have some freebies attached to this video. And there is a link to an online calculator, which is on the Sports Trading Life blog. I've put it on there. And also a cheat sheet to download to show you how you can potentially work out if there is value, if there is an edge in your later draw plus one one trade, or if you should just back over 0.5 goals. Uh, the, the calculator will show you fully uh, just how much percentage increase in value you will get doing the later draw plus one one versus just backing over 0.5 goals. And I'm actually gonna give you a quick video demonstration of how to do that right now. This is Juventus against AC Milan. And let's just say uh, theoretically that I think there is gonna be a second half goal in this. Should I use the later draw uh, plus one one or should I uh, just back over 0.5 goals so uh, let's let's get involved we're gonna lay the draw I'm just gonna lay it there uh, uh, 2.66 I'm gonna put it in the market and then um, well you're gonna see there you go 166 pounds worth of risk and 100 100 pound profit potential so let's head over to the correct score market and we need to cover the one one to cover the uh, the 166 so 20 24 pounds should cover it but it's not quite enough in the eight odds so we're gonna have to go down there and i think let's just round it up to 25 okay and then we should see that get matched i'm just gonna so that means our risk on the market right now is 25 pounds on the correct score market and then uh, 166 on the draw so 166 that means that, that gives us 191 pounds of risk in the market and obviously we're going to minus 25 from the 100 pound profit potential so that gives us a potential win of uh, 75 pounds so keep that in mind but either way right now we have 191 pounds risk in the market and this is where we're going to try and work out if we have any sort of edge or how big the edge is or, or, or what so let's go over to the over and under 0.5 goals market currently priced at 1.31 and we're going to back that or not necessarily back it we're just going to put in the calculation <laughs> and we're going to see uh, how much we could make that way so we could make 59 pounds 21 just put in 191 pounds on the 1.31 then that would be the profit if there is another goal so let's head over to the, the calculator and what you're going to do is you're going to select this option the bottom option what is the percentage increase decrease from x to y and we're going to put in, in the first option, we're going to put in how much we would make on the over and under uh, scenario, £59.21. Let's just put that in, £59.21. Now, we want to work out how much would we make if, obviously, it, the later draw play, plus one, one plays out how we want it to play. That would mean we're going to make £100 on the correct score market, 
but we are going to lose 20 sorry we're going to make 100 pound on a match odds market but we're going to lose 25 pounds on a correct score market so 75 pounds is how much we could make if everything goes to plan uh uh, with, with this strategy. So let's just put that in on the calculator. I'm going to put that in here, 75 pounds. And then you just click on calculate and then it's going to show us what the percentage increase is doing it that way. So you can see here a 26% increase, a 26.66% uh, increase uh, doing it with, with the later draw 1-1. One, one. And of course, I know this all depends on whether it all goes to plan. So that is obviously what you need to, to keep in mind also. But I mean, it, it's totally up to you. You need to decide, is is it worth me? And obviously, listen, this is only really if you want to back or if you fancy another goal in the second half. Don't, don't, don't start doing this blindly. But you need to decide, what is it worth you doing? Is it worth just backing the over 0.5 goals and just being done with it, not having to worry about anything else? Or is that 26% increase enough for you to say hey i'm going to use the later draw plus one one um if it, if it finishes one one i accept i'm going to make zero if it's two if it goes to two one i accept i'm going to make a lot less than that 26 percent increase that's what you have to keep in mind so this is all for you to decide this is all for you to decide in all these videos i am not going to push you in any direction or the other that is for sure but uh, you just have to decide whether that is a big enough edge and of course the edge is going to vary depending on the match you use i've seen uh, this calculation uh, be above 30 percent and i've seen it lower than 26 percent so you you need to decide if it is really worth it but for you to do this, the calculator link is in the description and the link to the cheat sheet, that is in the description too. So definitely download the, the, the cheat sheet so you don't have to keep referring to this video. And then, hey, head over to the markets and check it out and see if you think it's worth a go. And it really is down to you to decide if you think it is worth a go. Remember on this channel, we are just exploring strategies. If I ever put up a strategy on a channel, it is not necessarily an endorsement. There are pros and cons to every strategy as well. There is no no risk strategy that you have to keep in mind. What we're trying to do is find an edge. But if you are going to use the later draw plus back in 1-1, you've seen the examples. You can see how there is an increase in value by doing it that way versus just backing uh, for another goal. But you do have to keep in mind that, yes, if you will make zero if it ends 1-1. You're going to make much less if the score goes 2-1. Another scenario, which I didn't mention yet, is that if it was to go 2-1 early in the second half, it's, always a, it's also a pretty bad scenario because then I think you're going to lose on possibly the match odds as well as the correct score. I mean, it's really not great. And also, you are going to need a pretty high strike rate to be profitable on this. I mean, it says 70% on there, but it might well need to be 80%. So you've got, to keep, you've got to keep all of that in mind and then just decide for yourself if this is all worth that increase in value. I mean, you, sh you saw with the calculator, we could get a 26%. Sometimes it could be 30%. Maybe it could be around 20%. Maybe there could be no increase at all. This is down to you to decide. Please don't e email me asking how much value you should look for. This is now your homework <laughs> if you are interested in taking this further. So anyway, that is that. Finally, I would just say, give it a go. Give it a go. I mean, if you think that this looks like an interesting approach to trading football and laying a draw, then the best thing to do is actually just give it a go and see how it actually plays out for yourself. Don't email me asking me if you think it's if I think it's a good idea or what. You got to go in. You got to go into the markets yourself, and you got to find your own edge. <laughs> but anyway, um, use the calculator. See what edge you can find before you enter the market. And then just see if you can make it profitable in the long term. I mean, you could follow it as is set out in the video or more than likely you could tweak it and explore other options and ways of trading like this. And honestly, if you can find any ways to improve this or increase the edge, uh, then feel free to leave a comment below uh, rather than keeping it for yourself. <laughs> but yeah, any comments would be much, much appreciated. And of course, if you do give it a go, let us know how you get on. Let us know whether it was, whether it was successful for you or not. And that is just about it. But do remember, if you did enjoy this video, you want to see more videos just like this, hit that subscribe button and then also hit the notification bell so you are the first to know when new videos come out. Also, remember, don't forget, check all the links in the description of this video. You've got your freebies in there. You've got the calculator. You've got the PDF. You can start giving that a go yourself and start to see if you can find an edge in this approach. 
And also here are some other videos. If you want to keep watching, check out that video or check out that video. They're both just as, as good as each other. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.